As the daughter of one of South Carolina's first families, Angelina Grimke lived in almost unimaginable luxury. In the 1820s, Charleston's aristocracy was one of the wealthiest societies on earth. But Angelina found it almost unbearable, an empire of sin. The daughter of a southern plantation owner, Angelina Grimke, who in the late 1820s struggled with slavery and, and had felt from when she was very young that it was a terrible, terrible um, institution and she saw it up close and could no longer live with it and fled to the north and, uh, and became an abolitionist. Angelina Grimke never surrendered the vision of a more perfect society in which black and white, men and women, walked together in the ways of God. I was thinking about what Angelina's you know, ideology, if I could put it into one sentence, and there was a, le there was a letter she wrote to uh, uh, Catherine Beecher, and, it's, and, and it said, I recognize no rights but human rights. It was very simple. It's very simple, and it's, it's very clear. She's, there's no difference between man, woman, black, white, rich, poor. And so she felt women should have the right to vote. Women should have all the rights and privileges that white men do. And she was the wor first woman to uh, speak in front of a legislative body. And, uh, and I, when I read that, I was so um, t moved by that. Because I, I just, it never crossed my mind that that would be an issue, women speaking in front of men. Uh, but it was. These are our national heroes. Um, and I, I'm inspired by them, and I hope the viewers will be too after they watch this series.